For everybody listening at home, if you're not familiar with attachment theory, let's make this real simple. When you are born, you cannot take care of yourself and you have to learn, will other people care for me, help me, be reasonable, be arbitrary, be hurtful, abandon me? And if they do not act appropriately, is it their fault for being unreliable when they are stressed out and I can't trust people? Or is it my fault for having something wrong with me that makes people reject and abandon me? And if your parents raise you, hopefully like I'm raising my kids, God willing, to believe that I will listen with them, talk with them, build solutions collaboratively with them. They can get their needs met. My son comes to me and says, dad, I want a Godzilla action figure. I don't say, no, you don't get that. You're, you you know, you owe me or anything like that. I say, hmm, okay, well, let's talk about that. What are you wanting? Why are you wanting it? And let's talk about when is a good time you could get that. And let's talk about what would need to be done for you to earn that. And let's just build it together. Let's build that solution. I don't really tell my kids no. If they say I want ice cream, I don't say never. And I also don't say here's ice cream every single day for the next five years. I say, well, let's talk about the appropriateness of ice cream. Let's talk about how you can earn that and help you how you can use it wisely, right? There's a time and a place to eat chocolate ice cream. So if your parents do that with you, you develop secure attachment, which is great. Unfortunately, about 65% of Gen Z adults did not build secure attachment. 35% of them are securely attached. 65% of Gen Z adults, the research shows, have insecure attachment. Either they believe that there is never going to be love or care directed to them from other people because other people are incapable of it, and therefore they are in lone wolf survival mode. Or they believe that other people will never love them because they themselves have something wrong with them that makes them unworthy of love. So they are in approval seeking and people pleasing mode perpetually. That's anxious attachment style or avoidant attachment style. And about two to 5% of them, the research shows, probably have a blend of both, what we call the disorganized style, where they are both fearful of self and fearful of other people. 65%. It's getting worse. Uh, the research shows about 50% of millennials have this. And about 35% of boomers have this, is what the research shows. So it's definitely escalating. This is a survival adaptation that kicks on naturally when human society is in collapse and when social collapse has happened and when stability is gone and resources are scarce and people have to sort of fight for survival, especially as children. This is an indicator that we are already in a social collapse because more than half of the population is now experiencing it and we are existing in the rubble of a situation that uh, we don't realize has collapsed because our systems are still holding us upright. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's interesting that you say it's like uh, the, the sort of um, society is kind of collapsing. It's a, it's a signal. Um, that, that's kind of like an interesting thing. I, I was wondering like, is it, is it also because like there's issues with sort of, uh, families now and around fatherhood. I mean, I know in America, there's something, there's some like crazy statistic where you have, I don't know, like 17 million families that are fatherless, like, you know, because either it's like, you know, single mother, um, the father left or, you know, just like a, I guess a one night stand and, you know, just have a single mom. And, um, that, that's, that's quite concerning. That's a huge, a huge number, 17 million families. I, I I, I would be surprised if it was actually that low. I'd be, I, I would actually be, be believing it was much higher than that. Fatherlessness in America is at massive epidemic levels. 99% uh, of mass shooters, more than 99% of mass shooters come from fatherless families or, or did not have a father in their primary home. Uh, fatherless issues are not just from deadbeat dads. It's, it's also from uh, courts taking away children from fathers, from false accusations from mothers. It's massive custody disputes and massive custody bias in, in terms of moms, even drug addict moms, uh, and massive sympathy for, for those mothers. It is also deadbeat fathers walking away, choosing not to be part of that life. It is single mothers getting knocked up after five or six or 10 dates on Tinder and not knowing who the dad is. There, there are so many challenges that are happening right now, and the family decay is a part of an escalating process that I've tracked out over the last 110 years here in America, where attachment issues are getting worse and they have been since the 1910s, since World War I, it's been getting worse and worse and worse with each successive generation to the point that most modern generations have never seen a functioning society or hardly seen a functioning family at all. So they don't even have that framework, which is why we've arrived at the 65% insecurely attached rate. The collapse of the family is the problem and it's also a growing symptom 